what's on offer here is the direct recognition of the nature of reality and you're given very simple instructions very few instructions that are easy to implement for you to test in your experience so rather than allowing yourself to be ruled by platitudes and second-hand knowledge and platitudes is a term that means a profound statement seems profound but it's completely empty now if you go to your Facebook homepage and just look at the, the number of posts that say things like um, if you want the rainbow you have to experience the rain things like this that would be a platitude so they're seemingly profound but, but they're empty of, of, of anything really in the balance view training you're given instructions and written text that elicit the experience of the nature of reality so that is completely different than these statements so from the heart the only way you're going to know about the effectiveness of the support structures of this training is if you test them in your experience so what what you might label as dependency if you've never if you've never relied on the four mainstays i label exaltation complete love devotion and exaltation i am the four mainstays there is no separation between the nature of reality and every single aspect of this training but this isn't something that you can think about it's something that can only be experienced directly by you if you test what's on offer here so it's not about believing a single thing that's being said here you can think about what's being offered here and write books and books about what's on offer here but unless you test it in your experience you won't know the great profundity of this practice now when I came to this training I'd had the best part of 20 years of really living my life from platitudes and second-hand knowledge I've been to many trainings and, and, and teachers and teachings that described the nature of reality in a, in a really beautiful way but it, was in, it didn't give me the experience and it was very annoying now I always say this but if you, if you wanted to be a great say trumpet player and you were fortunate enough to meet Miles Davis you wouldn't want him to talk about playing the trumpet and how magnificent playing the trumpet is and what it feels like I mean that would be amazing and interesting and we could sit here forever talking about how amazing it is to practice and what you can actually do when with, with all of the, the techniques and where he's played all around the world and someday you might be able to play that like that it's just like you want to play the trumpet so what you want is Miles Davis to sit down with you and show him and teach you how to play the trumpet and if you're sitting around with other trumpet players also learning in the same way as you you're going to be a much better trumpet player than if you sit in a cave talking to yourself about how magnificent it would be to play the trumpet <laughs> you see you, you, you all laugh at this but this is what we're doing if we're subjecting ourselves to beautiful descriptions of the nature of reality and don't get me wrong they they are beautiful if they do not elicit the direct experience then then they are well we set the bar very very low so the problem is we've exalted things that aren't very empowering like uh well acting music uh poetry all of these things and we as human beings have taken these 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 arts to very 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 profound levels so I did, I did an English degree shall I compare thee to a summer's day thou art more lovely and more temperate rough winds do shake the darling buds of May blah 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 um, that's one of the most famous love uh, sonnets from Shakespeare now if an alien came down to our planet and, 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 and looked at what we're doing they'd say well yeah they've got this uh, quite quaint um, practice they 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 they've managed to refine their their monkey grunting into uh you know a, a certain set of, of monkey grunts so to the alien like going <laughs> that's what that sonnet would sound like now i'm not i don't mean to belittle any of this because i was a musician i worked in film and tv and and, and i love all of these things but when you test the four mainstays when you start to experience the nature of reality and what the nature of reality is is complete exaltation 
complete bliss in and as every single moment, then the most amazing sonnets in the world, you see, wow, that is, really isn't where it's at. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful expression of human intelligence. But the nature of reality, God damn it, that is amazing. And, um, you know, the primordial sound, the primordial colour, the primordial whatever you want to call it that pervades everything without exception, positive, neutral and negative, this is what we're recognising when we rely on open intelligence. So in the beginning, the instruction to stop thinking, if you don't understand it, it doesn't matter. There are many, many other ways where you can elicit the direct experience of what's being described here. So for me, when I came to this training, I hated all of these instructions. And the reason I hated them was because they did, they did, they did not work for me. My previous experience was they did not give me the experience of, of what I was after. And by the time I came to this training, all I wanted was to feel slightly okay some of the time. Ambition. And, um, and so I said, you know, how can I stop thinking if you can't explain it to me? How can I take short moments if you can't explain it to me? And I was expecting quite a, you know, quite a nice argument. That's, that's, I quite like doing those things um, then. And, um, but all I got was a, a very disarming and very empowering, that, that's completely fine. Just listen to some talks. So take the next week and maybe one or two hours a day listen to some talks. So on, on the Balance View website, balanceview.org, there are thousands of hours of talks. And so that would be my suggestion, just, just relax and when you're walking around, just listen to some talks. And that's all I did. And I didn't, I, I was like, well, that, how can that possibly do anything? And I, so I, but I was open enough to test the instruction. So that's what I did. I started to listen to some talks. I came to open meetings. I didn't like being in the open meetings. You see, I thought that was some indication that there was something wrong that I had to like being in this, in this environment because that would be proof that I, I was doing okay. But my experience is that I don't like anything about myself or anyone else or my circumstance 99% of the time. I mean, what's going on? Like now, I'm so, so sweaty and hot. I said yesterday in the training, I'm basically like one of those walruses that sits on an iceberg. They're covered in blubber and they, they're, they're, they're basically adapted to living in really cold climates. And if you take a walrus and put him in Goa, it's, it's, it's not very pleasant. <laughs> and so you can imagine the things that are going on right now. And um, you see, so it wasn't, it wasn't just that, so physical discomfort, for example, but also mental anguish. Now, it's, it's absolutely fine to support yourself in gaining confidence in open intelligence by avoiding situations and circumstances where you've acted in disharmonious ways for the, for the entirety of your life. So, for example, for me, I'm not proud of this at all, but from the age of about 14 to maybe 36, I took so many drugs, hallucinogenic drugs, every single drug you can name I've, I've taken recreationally. And I did that pretty much every weekend for my entire life. And um, the reason I did that was because I wanted to modify this horrible torrential data. It was all negative. And if I could, if I could uh, numb it down or make it more interesting, that, that, was, that was why I was doing all of this stuff. It was actually catastrophic. Um, as I got older, it, was, it, it absolutely wasn't helping. I mean, it didn't help from, from right from the beginning. And so this was my approach to try and modify my data streams, to have no data or less data or, or, or to make it more interesting. And so when that was taken away from me, because I would be dead, I wouldn't be sitting here now if I'd continued in that way, I, I changed my way of approaching this attempt to modify my data streams with things like meditation and yoga and eating healthily and doing lots of exercise and things like this. And the motivation was always the same. I'm flawed. Everything about me is wrong. You know, is an indication that I am flawed and it all needs to be changed and modified in order for me to feel okay in the future. So 
that was no different for me being 17 and trying to get a better job and more money in order to feel okay. And again, I don't, I don't wish to belittle all of the amazing practices that we do here in India, but it's very, very important to recognize that the motivation that you are flawed or that anyone is flawed and that they need fixing is totally incorrect. It's something that we've learned from being very small children, from the, the fairy tales that our parents tell us when we go to bed at night. If you look at the plot of nearly every children's story, it's usually there's something bad that needs to be overcome in order to feel okay. And usually the prince and the princess m marry and live happily ever after at the end. At least that was the story I was read. And then on TV and in school and all of these things, it reinforces the fact that we, we need something else to be complete. We need a good job, we need good friends, we need to get married, we need to have children. Um, and ma many other descriptive frameworks that need to be in place in order f for us to feel okay. Now, many of you here probably have these in place or have had these in place at some point in your life. And it's very clear that no matter how amazing your life is on a conventional level, there's always something missing. Now, again, this isn't to say that conventional striving is, isn't important because it is. It's better to be healthy. It's better to have money. It's better to, you know, all of these things. This is important, but in and of itself, it does not give you what you want. And so in the Balance View training, we introduce you, introduce you to something immediately in your experience that does provide you with well-being. Now, that might not be your experience right at the beginning when you first hear the instruction. And this is the importance of testing the support structure. So the, the instruction of recognizing open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times until continuous, that's something you can do wherever you are. For me, that was amazing. I could see clearly that I don't need to change in order to practice short moments. It's all of my thoughts, emotions, circumstances, people, places and things in my life that give me the choice. I mean, how amazing is that? Right there and then, nothing needs to change for me to practice. That was like, wow, this is, this is brilliant. It's genius doesn't mean that I didn't want everything to change. I still want everything to change. You know, look at my face, for God's sake. It's like a bag of spanners. I'd much rather look like Clint Eastwood, but it's just not going to happen. So, um, you know, I'm stuck with what I've got. And, uh, and this is true of our friends and family as well. And children, you're stuck with what you've got. And that might be a good thing or it might be a bad thing. But the point is, with these lifelong commitments, the only thing we can do is rely on our own, our own recognition of open intelligence. Now, from my experience, doing that with my family has, has had the most amazing results. I don't, I don't sit there with my sisters and my father, you know, when, when they're annoying me and going, well, actually, your thoughts and open intelligence, are, they're, they're equal, and it's an expanse of equalness like this. It's just like, you know, he punched me in the face, and rightly so. You know, it's just, it's not our job to, to speak at people. It's our job to do the only thing we can do, which is to take responsibility for ourselves by relying on open intelligence. Now, I didn't say anything about this training to my father. If, if, I'd have, if I, I went to India, if I'd have spoken to him and said, yeah, I've met this really amazing group of people. All you have to do is do nothing and everything's fine and I love you, like this. <laughs> What, what do you think would happen? He'd be, he'd be there with all of his friends and a doctor with a big, n in, inject me, take, take me back to the mental home. So it's, it's not about being, uh, being uncontrived and weird. And when you do the 12 empowerments training, which is a foundation training, you're given very, very practical suggestions on how to harmonize relationships with all of your family. And it doesn't mean Harmonization doesn't mean that everyone's going to go, oh yeah, Adrian, you're right, you're brilliant, I love you. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Everything is the same. The difference is you are relying on the stability of open intelligence. And that gives a whole different perspective to relating. So my father has changed from being my nemesis to being my greatest, greatest, greatest friend. It's like, I, can't, I love him so much. I can't do enough for him. When I asked him the first time, can I help you in the garden? He, he nearly had a heart attack because he used to request me to just do chores and I would just like 
slam the doors and go, you ate me, I don't want, you only had me so I had to peel potatoes. I'm not, you know, I'm not your slave, you know, all of this. And, uh, and I, I, I would do a, a, a deliberately do the worst job possible in the hope that he would never ask me to do any, any chores again. Totally, totally begrudgingly and, and, and to, to elicit this, this, this gratitude and love in, for myself, first of all, and then rely on that when I relate to my father and anyone for that matter, is, is the most wonderful thing. Now, I, I, I have an auntie who's convinced I'm in a cult. And, uh, and I can see that her, con her concern is just, it's so wonderful. She loves me so much and she's really worried. Now, do you think that if, if I tried to say, you know, it, we're not in a cult, it's not a cult, it's not a cult, <laughs> like uh, one of us, one of us. You see, just look around you, what's going on here. Are we, do we look the same? Are we all different ages, all different groups? I mean, it's the most remarkable, remarkable thing. And Balanced View is you. It's a grass grassroots organisation based on every individual testing the simple instructions. That's why it's just flourishing so easily and effortlessly. It isn't some amorphous entity, they, it's you. You test the four mainstays and see what happens in your experience if you, you know, and then you'll see for yourself.